I began my first term by looking at the seaside and how this tied in with my memory of holidays with my family. I described my father's service in the army, my family holidays and how that impacted on my photography practice. I believe my photography has changed significantly since the beginning of this course and has opened up new areas and possibilities for study. This term, my practice continues the exploration into memory, concentrating on my childhood holidays at the seaside. I have decided to focus my study on my father and the East Yorkshire town of Filey. The concept of this project evolved from a family photo archive, which included pictures of family holidays. This photograph, I believe, acts as a metaphor for my project. It shows my grandfather carrying my young mother on his back while paddling in the sea. I never met my grandparents and unfortunately don't know who the small child is. One thing that strikes me about this photograph is that its image is blurred. This photograph has survived for over 90 years and someone has decided that it's worthy of keeping. The image could almost be contemporary. This photo is reminiscent of Gerhard Richter's work, where he produces abstract photorealistic paintings but intentionally blurs the image. Richter says about these paintings, I blur things to make everything equally important and equally unimportant. This picture I find reminiscent of the archive photo in the way it simplifies the scene. It provides a haunting, timeless effect. Looking through my archival material, I found several other items of particular interest. One being a letter by my father wrote to my mother on the day of their wedding. I wondered whether I should use such personal items in a public forum, but I hope it gives the viewer an insight into my father's character. Discovering this letter, I was advised to look at the book Red-Headed Peckerwood by Christian Patterson. In this book, Patterson used photography combined with copies of artefacts he had found in the investigation. The book is based on the true story of two American teenagers in the 1950s who embarked on a killing spree. Decades later, Patterson revisited the crime scenes and was surprised to find evidence had been overlooked by the investigating authorities. The book is particularly successful in how he tells the story through a combination of images and artefacts using both colour and black and white images. It has inserts of notes and letters which give it the feel of a scrapbook. I find this book fascinating and beautifully finished. During my work on the family archives, I found my father's old Kodak camera and to my delight found exposed film inside. I developed the film which allowed me to date it to around 1986. Much of the film had been ruined, but to my surprise I found a picture of my parents in their late 60s standing in my brother's garden in Norfolk. This discovery was particularly special as it sadly reminded me that my mother would die four years later and my father soon after. Is this the punctum? Bath says regarding his dead mother's photo, it exists only for me. For you, it will be nothing but an indifferent picture. My research this term has highlighted several practitioners using the theme of the seaside. My study included the Turner exhibition Seaside Photographed, a publication that introduced me to artists such as Paul Nash, Martin Parr, Tony Ray Jones and Ian McKell. Parr's book, The Last Resort, is perhaps the best-known contemporary example of this practice. He depicts the seaside town of New Brighton in the early 80s over numerous bank holidays. His depiction is honest but almost too pragmatic in my view. The work first appeared in 1986 and was subjected to criticism from his peers. Art critic David Lee's review was particularly scathing. Parr has habitually discovered visitors at the worst, greedily eating and drinking junk food and discarding containers and wrappers. He goes on to say, Our historic working class, usually dealt with generously by documentary photographers, becomes a sitting duck for a more sophisticated audience. It is ironic that this criticism is equally condescending. 
with both of them coming from middle class backgrounds, I think Pa and Lee's perspective could be considered voyeuristic. I much prefer Ian McKell's work, which is still gritty, but humorous and sympathetic to the subject. Other practitioners I have been researching and also advised by my tutors are Valerie Berlin and her current exhibition of shopfront photography at the V&A, which is something I am doing in my own practice. I have been looking at Jack Latham's sugar paper theories, which is on a similar theme to red-headed peckerwood and currently exhibited at the Royal Photographic Society. Also Sam and Robert's work, We English, and Jacques-Henri Latiga, described in the Guardian newspaper as a photographer who happened to catch the spirit of the early 20th century. I have researched how best to photograph my archive. I didn't want to invest in expensive lighting equipment at this stage of my studies, but I needed to develop a method that would provide a consistent result. I tried many ways which included the use of two or three domestic lamps, even covering them with baking paper, which is not combustible, to diffuse the light. In the end I found a simple solution. Using a daylight bulb in my work lamp, I bounced the light off the sloping ceiling in my studio, which, combined with the ceiling lighting, illuminated the objects with a soft shadow. To reproduce archival photographs, I would either scan the images using a flatbed scanner or re-photograph them on my work table in the case of books or bulky items. In my tutorials, it was suggested I look at other archivists' work, in particular Arwood Mesmer's work and the archiving of Berlin's police historical collection. This is a fascinating insight into student protests. His book... Berlin, 1966-70, to catalogues the images in a chronological order using a film border as a device to add continuity to the presentation. Each chapter is differentiated with a date and a simple line-drawn map with occasional narrative. The paper used in the book is thin with a matte finish. This lends the book to have the feeling of handling a newspaper, almost as if the ink will come off in your hands. As I explore different publications, I am becoming more aware how important paper is and it's something I will research for my future book. My research in finally has found much of the town centre has not changed dramatically since my childhood, although coffee and charity shops are abundant. I found one shop on the high street which had remained in the same ownership for 50 years, Originally a gents outfitter, it now sells mostly militaria. Amongst the items are objects which could make the modern day viewer uncomfortable, items which hark back to the less politically correct post-war years. What is interesting is that as a child I was never allowed in this shop. I suspect my parents, seeing the Nazi regalia, thought better of it. This photograph could have been taken 40 years ago and provides a tentative connection between my childhood and my parents. My future practice will be to expand my photography portfolio finally. I particularly want to photograph people, possibly in their workplace. I also need to document the modern day finally and how it has changed since my father's day. I also want to look deeper into the archive material, particularly the letters which could lead me to other photographic opportunities. For example, the wedding day letter mentions White Heather. My aim for the moment is to produce a book and hold a local exhibition. There is a small gallery in Farley that accommodates local artists. The book will be either self-published, which would be a limited edition and possibly handmade, or I will approach publishers such as the Aperture Foundation or Mac Books.